What I'm struggling to hold right now might be one of the largest guitar cases of all time. This is a Gibson Explorer. Just firstly, a massive warning to anyone who might be watching this video, hoping to see a shredder. If that's what you're looking for, I apologize, that's not me. But I'm gonna do my best to showcase some of the tones you can get out of this. I actually own a Flying V, and I'm a huge fan of the tones. You can see a few of the blues guys back here play Flying Vs. But I'm gonna play something a little bit different. I hope you enjoy it. Let's see how it sounds. Here it is, my first time ever playing a Gibson Explorer. This is a 2020 model. Let's take a look. Here's the guitar up close. Now the first thing I need to point out is it's a gloss nitrocellulose lacquer finish. So it's highly reflective, but I love the fact you can see the wood grain. It looks absolutely beautiful on my reference monitor. And what I'm seeing on that is very accurate to how it looks actually in, on, you know, in person or whatever. So it's pretty cool. Now this is a little bit different. It's much like the Flying V we get Two volume controls, this is the neck and bridge volume controls, and then a global tone control. I really like the simplicity of that. And as you can see, the, the jack for the cable is on the side back here, not under here. I really like that. I think having it on this side is a really great touch and it gets out of the way. You can run it through your guitar strap this way if you're wearing a guitar strap. In terms of the pickups, we get two burst buckers. We get a burst bucker two in the neck and a burst bucker three in the bridge. We also get a three-way toggle switch to select between the pickups on the front horn. Now looking at it like this, just this side here, very reminiscent of that flying V, but backwards, kinda, and missing this entire section here. <laughs> now while this guitar looks absolutely enormous, one thing to point out is it's not very heavy at all. It's nowhere near the same weight as most Gibson Les Pauls. So if weight was a concern, you were thinking, man, these are so big that they're gonna just absolutely break your back. It's not the case. They're actually really light and they're very well balanced. You can sit down with them on your lap and they're not gonna tilt either way. Very cool. Now without question, this might be one of the craziest looking headstocks I've ever seen. It's got the Gibson logo right down the end there. But what I love about it is the fact all the tuners are on one side. I much prefer this for me. It just means you can change strings a whole lot more effective without having to sort of, you know, get under the guitar this way and wind them. It's all on one side. And just a quick look at the back of the guitar as well. It's really, really beautiful. In terms of the neck, it's a very comfortable neck. It's not overly fat, but it's not ultra thin. It's somewhere right in the middle. It should appeal to pretty much anyone who picks this up, unless you're a fan only of 50 really fat style necks. Firstly, a massive thank you to Sky Music for letting me borrow this. If you live in Australia, links to the Sky Music will be below. If you live overseas, I'll leave some Sweetwater and Toman links down there as well. So this is one of the 2020 models and I own the Flying V in this series. The Flying V is a beautiful guitar. This is a beautiful guitar, but it's kind of like abstract beautiful. It came out the same year from what I understand as a Flying V. So they were definitely making some pretty crazy designs back in the day, but yeah, super cool. So we're gonna test this out with a number of different tones. And like I said at the start, a warning, I'm not a shredder. I don't play really heavy music or anything like that, but I'm gonna try my best to show you at least what it's capable of on different gain settings as well as clean. So let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. I was just laughing because I was thinking, where do you put your arm on this thing? It's like a slide as well, it's crazy. We're going into my Marshall DSL 40CR amplifier and then out into the Two Notes Torpedo Live. So what we're doing today, we're gonna to start crunchy, crunchy, with a bit of dirt, and then we'll go over to some clean tones and then some lead tones, I'll leave time codes below. We're gonna start hinting at a few little riffs and stuff, and then I'll show you some of the tones I got in the intro clip as well. 
So this is Bridge Pickup, which is my favorite on this by mile. <laughs> Yeah. Now that intro riff I played pretty much on both pickups with the neck pickup down and then also on bridge. So we'll go over to both with the neck pickup back a bit. So this is the bridge pickup volume control. This is the neck volume control. So I had it about a quarter of the way down. So here we go. <laughs> Now I gotta tell you, even though it looks like a crazy shape for someone like me to be playing a guitar like this who's normally a blues guy, I gotta tell you, it's really comfortable to play. Once you get your arm over it, it feels like any other guitar and it's actually quite a lot lighter than a lot of the guitars, minus the, <laughs> the size of the case. But yeah, it feels really cool to play. I actually like this six on the side headstock too. I think that's pretty wild. Much easier to tune. I wish more guitars were like that. Anyway, over to the neck pickup, which is my least favorite pickup. It's not to say it's bad, but it has a sort of woolly sound to it which isn't for me, and I've got my bass down on the amp most of the way, so we may do some adjustments, we'll see how we go. I'm just gonna play some simple chords. I say it's not my favorite, but it still sounds good. <laughs> Over to bridge, I'll show you the same thing. So you can definitely hear the difference there, it's huge, it's night and day between the neck and the bridge pickup. Yeah, a lot more bass response from the neck pickup, great for doing, which is kind of like the opposite of trying to thought, it'd be better for lead tones. Gives you a nice big fat sound with that single note stuff. Let's try some clean tones now, something a little bit more mellow starting on the neck pickup, here we go. Over to bridge, let's give this a shot. All right, now let's break out the big guns. All right, let's try it now with the gain cranked on the ultra gain channel all the way up to three o'clock. I've added the reverb back on and the delay is going through the effects loop and that's up quite a lot as well. So here we go, bridge pick up. <laughs>
I love how high you can get up on this guitar. It's really easy to play all the way up. Pretty much, I think, as easy as my Flying V to get all the way up to the end. So, yeah, if you want a high uh, fret axis guitar and it's something a little bit different that you can't really rest your arm on, this is definitely the choice. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. My name's Shane. So what do I think of this guitar after playing my very first Gibson Explorer? So I'm gonna tell you some of the things I really like about it. You know what, as crazy as the shape is, for me at least anyway, this boring old guy that plays blues, I really love how it feels. It's a very comfortable guitar to play. I didn't notice the edge or anything. It's sort of rounded off anyway, so it feels pretty good. It's definitely not as comfortable as something like a Strat or a Les Paul or something like that, but it's still very comfortable. It wasn't distracting or anything like that. And it's well balanced as well, which is another huge bonus. Now, I gotta tell you, I love all the tuners on the one side of the headstock. Man, that's, that would spoil me if I had a Gibson with that. It would make life a whole lot easier. Changing strings on a guitar to have them all on one side is so much faster in my opinion and experience. But let me know if you think so as well. Now, I already know the shape of this won't be for everybody, but if you think a little bit back through musical history, there's a lot of people that play these guitars that totally slipped my mind. The Edge from U2, all the way through to James Hetfield from Metallica, Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, and many, many more. So you think about that, that's three completely different genres of music that this is very well suited to. It's just a, a crazy looking guitar, but a traditional humbucker guitar. I love the fact there's two volume controls and only one tone control. Very cool, very much like my Flying V, and that's what I like about its, its simplicity. Now, what don't I like about this? The size of the case, man. The guitar isn't that big. Like, if you see the guitar, it's not that tall. And this is the other thing I don't like about it. You can't rest it against your amp. You have to have it on a stand that looks like this. Otherwise, you're out of luck. It's not gonna balance really well on anything. But the case is so big. It's the biggest guitar case I've ever seen in my life. Now, my Flying V case is quite tall too, but it's more, way more narrow. It's, I couldn't, when they had the box out for, the, for, the, uh, for this, I'm like, I'm, I can't even fit that in my car. I'm pretty sure across the back seat, so I'll just take the case. But yeah, the case is massive, and because it has to go in slightly diagonal, uh, just due to the shape and the point, yeah, the case is that much bigger again, but the case is great as well. So, you know, if you're into this sort of style of electric guitar, you can't go too far wrong. The last sort of strange thing, if this was my guitar, I would lower the neck pickup down just a little bit more. I found it a little bit too bassy, even when I re-EQ'd my amp and just bought the bass most of the way out. It still had just a little bit too much low end oomph, which isn't, which isn't a hard or a bad thing to fix. All you've got to do is lower that side of the uh, pickup and that will help you get a little bit less of that. But overall, man, in terms of how it feels to play, it's really cool if you dig this. I'll leave links to Sky Music, who I borrowed it from in the description below. And if you live overseas, I'll post some links in your part of the world down there as well. So overall, man, pretty cool. This definitely isn't on my list of guitars. I personally want, I already got a Flying V, that's crazy enough, but I gotta tell you, it's been fun playing a left-handed guitar that I've never actually played up until now. So this has been cool. Thanks for watching, catch you soon, see ya.